we're going to start this morning uh, a series. I, I, was, I, was, I was pushed into the first service this morning of necessity, and uh, I, I had so much material. I'm trying to get 45 minutes material into 25 minutes, and you know, 45 into 25 doesn't go. So I think we'll do a better, a better exercise this time around, those of you getting a second dose. But I want us to uh, uh, start talking on Sunday mornings, second service, about power-filled living. I think the Lord is showing me something that's been missing. Uh, if, we, if we have a look, there's not a, 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 a born-again believer who understands that healing is for today, who understands the authority of the believer, who understands the principle, the law of laying hands on the sick and the sick will recover. There's not one who doesn't want to see people restored, people healed, people's lives coming together, relationships coming together, people's minds getting sound. We want to see that. But I want to go further than that. I want to see some of the stuff that other people have witnessed where they've been present when arms have grown out and le legs have grown out. I don't just mean a little two inches. I'm talking about the guy had no arms and arms appeared. Teal Osborne's uh, ministry was replete with that happening across Africa. And uh, so I, I believe that those things, A.A. A. Allen, uh, Jack Coe, people like that, uh, were foretastes of glory divine. I believe God, God is not giving us a taste there and that person's over there, put them up on a pedestal. He's showing what God can do through anybody who's available to him. Our danger is getting into a works program and trying to follow the way that they lived. And that's not right because... God was speaking certain things to them. The one thing that has got to be common between what God did through individuals like that and ourselves is this. We have to be available and then obedient. Those two things, availability and obedience. And I believe that the rest of it, because quite frankly, you and I, we know this. We don't have any power of our own. Come on now. We've got authority. Authority is the exousia. It's the right to act. It is a privilege. Authority is a privilege. We are privileged people. One of the words for exousia is privilege. The other word for power is dunamis. That's his power flowing through us. You and I don't have any of that kind of power without him. But he said we wouldn't need to be without him. Because he said you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And a lot of us have had both water baptism and the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And Daddy Hagen said, you know, most Christians, we're talking about Pentecostals, if, uh, no, I won't tell you what he said. But it, it, basically, if, 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 if power was dynamite, they wouldn't have enough power to blow their noses. So bottom line is, we can talk about the power or we can learn to put this into demonstration. So we've got to put this uh, in context and we've got to understand there's a place for us to start. We can know a lot of things, but how come these things just don't jive? And there are some things that I think are missing that we can put in place. And putting in place is being aware of them and then embracing them and starting to live them out. That's how I believe we get results. I may never meet the people that you meet every day. They're your mission field. They're not mine. They're yours. You will be going to places. You'll commute with people. You'll be making contacts with customers. I'll never see, but you will. And if you understand that the steps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord, they invariably come across your path for a divine purpose. And that purpose is to meet Him in whatever way they need. Amen? Are we okay on that? So let's have a look at this. I want to take us this morning and start with uh, Luke chapter 4 and verse 17. Luke chapter 4, we're starting to read at verse 17. I hope you bring your Bibles along, bring a notepad along. The Holy Spirit's going to speak to you because I, I know that you want to grow. I know that you want to become. And in the process of becoming, we're not talking about intellectual information, stuff that just pandas to the mind. I'm talking about stuff that drops down into the spirit as you meditate. You have, there are certain things you have to accept. You have to accept that you are God's favorite. Now, can you accept that? You see, it's easy to say, yeah, I can. But then why do you view yourself so poorly? See, you are God's favorite. He, he doesn't favor anybody above you. 
He loves you and His favor moves towards you. What we need to understand is how important we are in God's sight. You say, well, how can I be important in God's sight? God doesn't just happen. God arrives on the scene because somebody like you is a God carrier. You're obedient to the Holy Spirit and you walk into a situation that God starts ministering to you, needs to be turned around to be congruent with the will of heaven. And when it's congruent with the will of heaven, blessing is released. I'm sure you know the background here to Luke chapter 7. Uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 17 and onwards. Jesus has been to the Jordan River. He's been baptized uh, in, in, by John. And as he comes out, he gets baptized with the Holy Spirit. The, the Spirit of the Lord comes upon him like a dove. And that coming upon is an anointing to do what? To do ministry. A lot of people are wanting anointings and you're not prepared to do ministry. You, why, do you, why do you want an anointing? See, the anointing is there to destroy the yoke. Isaiah chapter 10, 27 tells us. It's to destroy the yoke, the yoke of bondage that that person is, is in or that yoke of bondage that person is under. And there are people living uh, in, in bondages that you and I should be helping to set them free. And you need an anointing for that. And there are two anointings. The one is within thee. That is a well of water springing up to life eternal. That well is for thee. But it's out of that well springing up into eternal life that bubbles out of your innermost being and it becomes a river to those that are thirsty around about you. Then there's John chapter 7, 37, where Jesus talks about him being the, 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 the water of life. And we won't get into that now. We'll get into that at a later stage. But that is a coming upon. There is a coming upon, a clothing with the Holy Spirit that comes from God. And it only comes from God because God is putting that anointing on you to be able to do specific things. And if you haven't got a specific thing, there's no anointing. It's called the approval of God if you want to. All right, but so, so Jesus goes along and he's led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. That's what you read. Matthew chapter 4 and onwards. We're in, I, know we, I know where we are. This is Luke's parallel to that. But the point is this, that he goes in as the last Adam to defeat Satan in the three areas that you and I, if we're going to fail, we will fail in one of, well, hopefully only just one, but two or you might have be all three of these areas. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those are the three areas that everybody, if we're going to fail, that's where you fail. And that's why Jesus, led by the Spirit into the wilderness to deal with the enemy. After 40 days, that's when the enemy comes and Jesus defeats him. How does he defeat him? Because Jesus knew the word. And he said to him, Satan, it is written. Satan, it is written. Satan, it is written. Satan, it is written. Please hear me. There is nothing the enemy can throw at you that can overcome you because it's more powerful than what is on the inside of you. Greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. You've got to, doesn't make any difference how great the girl looks. doesn't make any difference how great the guy looks. Oh, Pastor, I just couldn't resist. You can. You didn't want to. You look for every opportunity not to because you wanted to have the experience. Experience brings consequences negatively okay all right okay so so jesus having dealt with the enemy now remember this watch this now for three for three and a half years it's the first time ever in the history of mankind that a man is walking the earth dictating to man's enemy satan and he dictates to him and he takes hold of him and he recognizes his work and he sees his handiwork, if you like. He sees him working in the situations and affairs of men. And he breaks the power of the devil and breaks the power of the devil and breaks the power of the devil. What is he doing? He's setting for you and me an example okay, that we should follow. He's saying this is the way a son of God walks. 